Yes, today we're taking a look at a movie that I've managed to avoid for my entire existence until today. Rollerball is a 2002 remake of a 70s movie of the same title. It is currently rated on the IMDb Bottom 100 as the worst remake ever made. Now I'm sure that people in the comments will uh, have different opinions on what the worst remake ever made is, but IMDb says it's this. It features a star-studded cast such as Chris Klein, LL Cool J, and this man. Exciting, I know. Rollerball exploded onto screens in 2002 and opened to $9 million on its opening weekend. Now that's pretty impressive actually for, you know, a weird little indie film. Except that's not what this is. This was actually produced by MGM and cost somewhere in the region of $70 million to make. And if I've done my math correctly, it's only to this date grossed between 40 and 50 million, which means it's lost just a, a little bit of money. This movie also managed to win three awards. Now, you might be, well, how did the worst remake ever made win three awards? What, what awards were these? Well, two of those were for two separate awards for 2002's worst movie. And the other one was for, <laughs> was awarded for worst remake. Maybe not the biggest claims to fame then, but you know what they say. If you can't be the best, be the worst in 2002. I think, it, I think it was Confucius who said that. Feel free to correct me. This is a 2002 movie. However, it is set in the distant future of 2005. <laughs> nice. And it revolves around a sport in which people dressed as gimps ride around on their roller skates in a figure of eight, attempting to throw a small metal ball into what appears to be a giant Femidon. Well, if that's not got you excited to watch, then I don't know what will. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2002's Rollerball. And the movie kicks off with a hardcore losing scene. Which can't be said for most other movies, I guess. Just gonna try and give it a compliment. For those of you who don't know what losing is, it's where you lie down on a baking tray with wheels and attempt to go down a hill very quickly. Luging, <laughs> that's the stupidest word ever. Luging takes everything uncool from downhill, longboarding, and motorcycling, wraps it all together in one incredibly dangerous package, and it falls in the similar sort of category as Tech Decky. That being, even if you're really good at it, it's, it's not exactly worth shouting about. Hey there, ladies. Wanna see my luge board? People have reached 100 miles an hour on these things. If you can reach those speeds in such a dangerous sport and still look like a wet lettuce, it's time to hang up the luge board and pick up a real sport. Something like camel jumping. <laughs> but just take a look at that luge pouch. Oh, that is a 10 out of 10 right there. I'm never going to get girls unless I learn how to luge pout. Oh, oh, Chris Klein, teach me your ways, please. I've been practicing for a long time now and I believe I am now. A professional loser. I've even got all of my professional loser equipment. Aren't those oven gloves? These, these are clearly loose mittens. They're not oven gloves. Oh, you're so embarrassing, Mum. Just record me doing the thing. Prepare to get wrecked. <laughs> Also, this was uh, filmed before the glorious uh, days of uh, warp stabilizers and various other things that would help us to stabilize our images. In body stabilization, ha! Never heard of it. This is 2002. Anyway, our protagonist Jonathan is then scooped up by LL Cool J because yes, LL Cool J is in this movie. And you know when a white guy who has never had any black friends, finally meets a black person and talks to them, and he tries to kind of talk cool. Uh... Well, why don't you bring them back? <laughs> Looks like you can afford it. Look at all these baubles. Look at these what? Look at all these baubles. I grew up listening to the ramblings of Tim Westwood, and I can't say I've ever heard that one before. LL then tells Jonathan about the Rollerball League, and God knows how they managed to have a full conversation with all the bad overdubbing going on. I just haven't gotten the break I need. You know, NHL tryouts are in three months. We then flash forward four months and we're now in Kazakhstan, because of course we are, for the first rollerball match of the movie. And it would appear that Jonathan took up LL's offer of joining the league. But how do we know this? Well, it's because they're all chanting his name. <laughs> I love 
that because they're in Kazakhstan, they had to spell his name out for the fans phonetically, <laughs> in like a crude English. I'm sure the locals are more than capable of saying the name Jonathan. Teamwork, so no more cowboy hot dog dog shit. No more the cowboy hot dog dog shit. You know what? I've missed the racial insensitivity of the 2000s. Ah, they were good times, man. Good times. Okay, so the first match has begun, and I've quickly come to two realizations. Realization number one, it doesn't matter how much rock music, leather, and pyrotechnics you have, you cannot make a group of people on roller skates look cool. Realization number two, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> okay, so there's a bunch of people on roller skates, some of them are wearing masks, some of them aren't, and then some of them are riding motorbikes? Whoever came up with this idea was severely intoxicated with all of the drugs that were available in whatever decade this was written. Uh... Running someone over with a motorbike that's fine. You know, there's no there's no red card, there's no sin bin. That's fair game. <laughs> Health and safety really did ruin everything, didn't it? Fucking <laughs> what? I will not allow this game to become corrupted like uh, so many things in this part of the world, you know? <laughs> you don't need to tell me about corruption in Kazakhstan during 2002 if I know anything. It's to the exact degree that Kazakhstan was corrupt, particularly during the year of 2002. <laughs> I know all about that. I swear the only thing I know about Kazakhstan isn't just Borat. God damn it, I don't know anything about Kazakhstan. The outfits in this movie are pretty insane. I gotta give them props for going all out. Sometimes that'll pay off, and sometimes you'll put LL Cool J in a leather suit with a helmet you might put on a blind dog and gauntlets that were reappropriated from the nearest Renaissance Fair. You can't win them all. Then, during this chaotic first match, someone gets injured, and then everyone seems quite surprised by this. Somebody get a medic! No way. There's only like 20 people roller skating in a very confined space with four motorcycles ripping about. How could something like this possibly happen? It cannot be! The first match is over and thank God for that. If I didn't have ADHD before this scene, God knows I do now. The editing is nuts. Just when you feel like you're getting a handle on what's going on, the movie throws a mallet directly at your face. Now, what I am about to show you, I have not touched it. I have not cut it, edited it. I have done nothing to the clip you're about to see. I'm just gonna let it play and I'm gonna let it speak for itself. See, to shine and see. Yes, if it's true, your mother is a crack whore. I promise you, watch the movie. Don't watch the movie, but watch the movie and that scene unfolds exactly like that. We will get right back to the movie in just a moment. I need to go and book myself in for a psych evaluation real quick. Okay, I don't know if the last scene gave me brain damage or if the person writing the dialogue has brain damage. My friends, they, they call me rabbit. Really? I think it's both. It's both, isn't it? And then within a matter of minutes, we go from the rollerball match to the changing room where everyone's naked and then everyone jumps into sports cars and they all race to the nearest strip club. I think I might have accidentally written the plot to this movie when I was 15. I don't know who wrote this, but whoever they are masturbates at least 15 times a day. Minimum. Oh my God, honey's at four o'clock. American horses, right? Absolutely, and hung like one. <laughs> Make that 16. So the twist in the plot is the a member of Jonathan's team, turns out that, you know, they had their helmets strap cut and the injury that he sustained was intentional. Now, that might have been an interesting plot twist had the rules for this game not been so batshit crazy. Do you remember? Not minutes ago, we watched a woman intentionally run over a man with a motorcycle. That was fine, but God forbid someone's helmet strap gets cut. I think we need just a little bit of perspective, maybe. Then follows the most confusing scene from the entire movie. I, I don't know if it means anything or if it is completely pointless. My bet is on completely pointless. But Jonathan and his girlfriend have to flee from a mob, but they don't explain why the mob is there or why they have to flee from it. They just do. Then they run to a place, but they don't explain why they're running to a place. And when they get there, they don't explain what that place is or why they're there. And when they get there, it turns out there's a man there, except they don't explain who the man is. 
They beat up the man and then they decide to leave the place that we don't know, leaving behind the man who they beat up who we also don't know. And I'm pretty sure nothing's happened and I'm left like, what? Now I might be wrong about this, but I have reason to believe that they've painted on Jonathan Stubble in this shot. It's a beautiful day, yeah? Yeah. I don't know, looks a little fishy to me, but if that's right, that's a pretty goofy way of telling the audience that time has passed since the last scene. <laughs> they filled his chin in, I mean, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. I honestly just don't know. I gotta say, there's a lot of practical effects in this movie, uh, which, you know, which I do appreciate, but I do feel bad for the stuntmen. Imagine breaking your spine, throwing yourself off a motorbike, and the clip of you doing that ends up in a stinker of a movie. That's gotta hurt more than the stunt. I don't really thought about that before, but like, just imagine how many like broken bones have gone into amazing stunts that have ended up in not so amazing movies. Man, that sucks. So it turns out the producers of the sport have been manufacturing injuries and drama to boost the ratings of the broadcasts. They usually do this by tormenting or jeopardizing the safety of the participants. Welcome to reality TV. But the injury in the last match was the last straw. So Jonathan and LL have decided to run away before they're killed. But it's not gonna be that easy, is it? No, because bad guy, money, stuff, you know, the, the usual. Then the next scene took me a little bit by surprise. There's no way I'm gonna die in this shithole of a country. No, not the deaths leveled at Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Russia, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not too sure where we are in the world at the moment. It's not that though, it's the night vision. Now what's wrong with night vision? Well, absolutely nothing, you know, especially if it's not 10 minutes long. The, the following 10 minutes of the movie are filmed to look as though it's night vision. A scene or two here and there, a very brief scene or two here and there, no prop. 10 straight minutes of night vision, that's pretty nutty. There are different ways of conveying that it's dark or it's nighttime in your scene. You could start by filming in the dark or at nighttime. <laughs> that, that might be a pretty good start. So do you remember the drama in the very first match was that like one of the guys had his helmet strap cut and Jonathan has been riding around in the final match with his helmet strap undone. Basically the same thing. Ah, oh, he's, oh, he's just too too cool for school, is he? Yeah, yeah, fuck you, I'm not wearing my shin pads. <laughs> so the producers of the sport have suspended all of the rules for this final match because ideally they want Jonathan to be killed during this match, but of course he's having none of this and then proceeds to beat everyone to death with a small cocktail table. That's actually what he does. This then starts a rebellion and all of the players rise up and then all of the bad guys with guns then begin running away from all of the people on roller skates dressed like gimps. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And they all live happily ever after. And that, then it ends. Where are we headed? To a doctor to start with. Thought I might take you home to my bed. Woohoo, yeah, it's the end of the movie. Everyone's happy. Yeah, are we just going to forget that LL Cool J, your best mate, died like a matter of minutes ago? He was shot with a gi ginormous sniper rifle. It might have even been an anti material rifle. No, would you, we don't care. Okay. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, it, it's a genuinely interesting premise. It really is. Like, wasn't told in the best way. Now, I did mention to my dad that I was watching this movie, and he said that he watched the original, uh, the 70s uh, original, a couple of times, and he said, that, he said that was great. He had great fun watching it. So if you're looking for a slightly better telling of this story, maybe go and watch the original. But this, you know, throughout the entire movie stayed in the territory of so bad, it's good. Actually found it very entertaining. Apart from the 10 minutes of night vision, which was utterly unbearable. Apart from that, ironically entertained by this movie. So stick around for the next video where we'll take a look at yet another one of the worst movies ever made so you don't have to watch them. But until then, Subscribe, you bitch. If you're looking for props from your favorite video games and movies, check out Ravenforge, the first link in the description below. 
Outstanding quality, you get fantastic customer service and you will not be disappointed. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. And as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Pozzabon, Flunky, Jax, Brennus, Jindra, Koss, Texas Lawman, Infinite Dum Dum, ATS, and David. Of course, actually, everyone's name is now up on the wall. So welcome if it is your first time on the wall and a big thank you to everyone who stuck around. Tier two members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melski, Saeed, MG Virgil, Kuno Sako, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Michael Terpia, Hadziu, Jan Witch, Mendicant Bias, Dagger D69, Nice. Michael, Jason Coward, Saint Nemo, Ken, and we're welcoming Canada Dog Ramachi to Tier 2. Welcome, my friend. Uh, and of course, a big thank you to the Tier 1 members as well. Yes, thank you each and every one of you. Obviously, it's, it's always nice to see new faces on the Patreon, but uh, it, the amount of people who have stuck around, it, it, it's mind-blowing. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your support. I, yeah, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Thank you very much. I've got a sword stuck in my penis. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? I hope you do, you little bitch, yeah? But until then, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you all very soon.